All right, welcome to Das Lab, where we are today working on um, this thing. Uh, not endorsed by any means. Um, it was smoking, uh, not cigarettes, just it was on fire. And um, I'm not going to start it up again and show you because it stinks. So I started taking it apart and I thought, hey, I should be filming this here. Um, it's interesting. Just kind of a clamshell sort of arrangement here but they had this in here and that kind of held it on and then there was another band that came up around here and held it on and uh a couple screws doo -doo -doo, took apart sorry you missed that i know you really want to watch me do do screws and we're going to try to find out well why it smoked and whether or not we want to uh, trust this ever again. Interesting sort of arrangement here. Okay. Um, variable ion output. I'd like to know what that does. Ions. Ion output. Hmm. And that connects on to here some sort of ion adjuster obviously which comes down through these wires to here oh there's lots going on in here what did this have it had warm warm and hot and these might have been speeds of some sort. And then down here we had this power pulse button here that was cold. I guess that turned off the circuit. And then the ion. This must have been expensive. Um, I'm sure this wasn't a cheapy. That comes in there. Nice uh, tubing. I know now that this is just not yellow. Um, it's quite you. Yellow scotch tape. It is a tape that uh, is heat resistant. That's not turning very well. When I first started it up, it was... It was spinning fine and then it got real slow and then it smoked i didn't see fire but then again i didn't want to leave it on long enough to see fire either you know this is the type of thing you can imagine oh look at that I've never seen a material like this before. Hopefully it's not uh, fibrous asbestos. I don't think so. It doesn't look like asbestos. Okay, those are not anymore. Okay. Wow, lots of different uh, connections to the heater element. And then we've got our... Those are not metal. They are some sort of insulator. And we've got our little motor here. Nice little uh, nice little motor. Let's see if I can get that. What does that look like? Just pushed on to you? Oh, what are we going to use? Mm. Probably screwed on. I don't know what caught on fire though. There's no uh, fur anywhere. Usually this gets clogged or you get clogged on the intake. 
and you don't get the airflow through there, but man, it smelled. It's quite the big heater element, though. So how is that going to... Excuse me. Some stress on that fan housing. I wonder... And that's not like it's got hot air. Well, I think I know why it's spinning slow. There's hair wrapped around there. Okay, I'm going to try to get this off. I'll come back later. Okay, so I didn't want to sound silly, but I'm thinking... Kind of looks like a DC motor, but my instincts tell me that it's AC. And how do you convert AC into DC? One, two, three, four. It's got a full wave bridge rectifier <laughs> built right in there. So that is a DC motor. Not, uh, I don't see any capacitors here, so it's probably... Uh, pulsed DC um, with no smoothing on there. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to charge my phone off of it by any means. But uh, yeah, that's what looks like it's going on there. Is a bridge rectifier in there? Okay, I'm still working on the fan. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna destroy this. I'm gonna take it apart. But there are lots of cool things to look at in here. There's that. There's all kinds of things. Um, this is cool too. Okay, so here we go. Snippy, snippy. Where do I cut from? Here we go. Make sure it's unplugged. Yep. Oh. Oh, then maybe there's my capacitor. Come to think of it. Maybe keep that thing. So the only thing holding this... <laughs> The only thing holding the heater on is the components, this resistor and the four diodes. That is holding this whole thing together. So if I was to go snip and snip, this big uh, ah, high wattage resistor, snip and Snip and snip. That's it. Snip. Okay. Let's look at this thing for a while. Covers. We got the heated element around here, and all inside. Oh, look at. Okay, see, we've got. Thick windings and thin windings. So there's probably our hot and cold. Where does it end? It's like the Christmas tree lights. Okay. So there's one end. And I don't I don't know what this wire is called. Nichrome or something like that. So if we take that off. Well, that's tough. Oh, boing. Okay, so there's one set of windings. You'd make a hell of a toaster. Yeah, that's got us to there. Just out of curiosity. Just out of curiosity. Interesting. Okay, so we've got several ohms here. No, that's too much. Yeah, it's got to be. We're on the two K range. Oh, yeah, we're we're low. Three hundred ohms. That might make a really nice variable resistor, you know, if you needed it. Somehow. Resistive wire. Yeah. No 
I don't have alligator clubs. Well, that should be reading something. I don't even know if you can see that. 124 ohms, something like that. Interesting. Okay, so there is resistance to that wire. And there's no coating on there. It's not like an element off of a stove where it's insulated. That is just, that is pure conductive wire right there. I tell you what, one ohm. So, hmm. Let's see. Jeez, Derek. Twenty ohms. Yeah, it doesn't it's not like a strain gauge it doesn't change with re, with tension 16 ohms okay i don't know what the voltage is on it so i can't tell you the amps but uh it gets red hot we know that okay where was i where's that thing okay over here so that was one coil and then there's a second coil of the same diameter material Maybe part of the ion generation generator. Okay, another interesting piece. And then we got the little bitty stuff, much more subtle. Okay, wait a second. Oh yeah, it's, it's got an actual, uh, some sort of a core in it. Maybe to give it some strength so it wouldn't uh, sag. Yeah, it's a lot, uh, it's a lot more flimsy. And it only goes halfway down. And uh, all, the, all these connections here. So we're not done with this piece yet. There's some neat things on here. So what I'm looking at here We've got the insulated wires coming up to the different points. We've got like traces, heavy duty bus work on here to get it to where it needs to be. But then we got this thing over here. So this, this is some sort of a, bi-metallic strip, I'm guessing. Okay, experiment time. We're gonna turn that on and we're gonna get some hot air on it. I don't know how hot it's hot. My hot air blower goes up to 480 and uh, we'll see. See if this thing bends. Oh, well look at that. Look at that, thermal overload. I like that. That doesn't take much. So that is fascinating to me. So the way that works is they take uh, two metals and we know that generally speaking, when things get hotter, they expand, okay? They will grow. And we take two metals with different coefficients of expansion and they glue them together. Now you heat them up, like in the hairdryer, and this one's gonna expand and this one's gonna expand, but this one has a much greater coefficient of expansion than this one does. So as they expand, they will bend as this one grows. 
because they're glued together, it has nowhere to go. It's got to bend around the corner. This one grows a little bit too, but not as much as this one. Gets hot, bends, and cools off. Click, comes back. Bimetallic strip. Two metals, bimetallic, glued together. And there's not really a lot that can go wrong with that. And we saw how it bent and clicked over. And that's not a switch in there. It's just, it's either making contact right there or not making contact. So what can go wrong with this? Well, uh, these contacts can short out. They can short together and then they won't open or they can get fouled and then they won't close. So uh, it's an automatic resetting switch, but things can go wrong, but not usually too often. Uh, that's why, you know, it's a safety feature that must be in this design and it's some sort of how, somehow or another directly related to the, uh, the device. So you'll see these sort of things. Um, you'll see these sort of things in things that tend to get hot. Uh, just a normal diode there, so it allows only current to flow in one direction. And then it's this thing. And I'm guessing, I'm guessing that that is a fuse. And that's just basically for overcurrent protection. I think if something got shorted out, if somebody jammed a screwdriver in there or something like that, um, this should be very low resistance. And it is, you can't see that, can you? Very low resistance. And one ohm, 0.8 ohms. Even my leads have some resistance, so. Almost a short circuit, but if you put too much current through there, that fuse will blow. And again, it's in the same circuit as all this other stuff. So it must have main power coming in through here. And if it either gets too hot or if somebody jams something in there and these things started short circuiting themselves out, then it would get too hot too fast. And that fuse would probably blow pretty quick. So both those are, are keepers that I will use, you know, if I'm ever building something and I want a little bit of protection in there, I don't know how many amps that that fuse is going to go out, but that, that bimetallic strip, I really like that. Uh, I really like that. Okay. That's not why we're here though. We are here because of this thing. And was that a capacitor? Let's see. Anything on there? Three leads. Mm. Not thinking it's a capacitor. Can't hear anything in there. No real markings on there. It's been taped up, potted. Could be a black, red, Another red, two signals, and yeah, I don't know. Wouldn't be surprised if it was a capacitor. I'll filter out some of that DC. And then we got this. Oh boy, how are we going to get that out? I have a feeling. <clears throat> that that... It's not going to want to come out easily. Is hooked on there? Glued in? Perhaps some blood to lubricate it.
All right, let me work on this for a little bit. I figured out how to get it out like this. You just rip it apart. That's the only way that was coming out. Um, I tried heating it up with a heat gun. And uh, no luck. It's bonded on here somehow. It's probably screwed on. But I cannot uh, grab onto it. Jeez, that, that hell is just killing my fingers. It's tough plastic, I'll tell you that much. Tough plastic. I just want the motor. That's what I'm going for now. Got to get some price out of it. Okay, so it was a press fit. And uh, sure enough, yee. It's amazing. It's amazing what hair can do. It's like weeds in the prop of a motor. Just adds up, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back. Death by a thousand paper cuts. Yeah. There is a lot of hair down there. Uh, oh, interesting. You got a brass bushing on that shaft. Well, that's fancy. Yeah. So that that's what killed this thing. Was uh Okay, so now reenacting what happened is turned it on. It ran well. It got hot. Then the motor dr slowed down drastically and it started to smoke. Now there was no hair here. But the fan, and um, unless something else slowed the fan down, which I don't think that would be a safety feature, less air blowing across here. These are designed to only run when you have a certain amount of, hair, of air going through here. And, um, so the fan, so the fan was blowing less air because it slowed down and this got overheated. So maybe some strands of hair did get in there because there was smoke, but I don't think it was coming from this, but then again, maybe everything burned off. So, okay. So yeah, lots of hair in there. And that definitely will slow things down. Oh, little plastic. Uh... Little screws there for that plastic thing. I bother taking them out. Sorry about the lighting. Not the greatest. It's the thing when you're salvaging these motors and stuff like that. If you can get at it, um, you'd want to save as much of this plastic as you can because maybe that can give you a mounting surface for this motor. But at the very least, you know what we're going to do is we're going to save these screws. And uh, if I ever needed a little DC motor for something, then... Uh, I could mount it uh, with the screws that came with it, right? What better place to store these screws? I've probably got a million of these somewhere, but when I need two of them, I know where they are, right there. And I'm not going to take that brass. Okay. 
yeah, it's uh, I can feel the uh, I can feel the G E E two thousand and seven G all right G E E General Electric Electric. So I could probably look up that number and get some specs on that little motor. High enough torque. You know, DC motors, high torque. So I'm going to get that hair out of there. Okay, I'll work on that. So, you know, there's a, about half of what I got out of there so far. And it adds up very strong. I think I got most of it. I mean, I, I could go in there with a torch. Okay, so what else we got in this thing? Um, I wonder, do I keep that? Uh, maybe it's a light DC cooling fan of some sort. Don't think it has to be that balanced. Yeah, keep it together. Do I keep this? Some sort of insulating material? Nope. Do I keep this? Some sort of snorkel device. Nice little stainless steel grating in there. Oh, that came out of here. Ah. Toss it. All right, what do we got down here in the component and the things? Some, oh, that's a momentary switch. That's the cold switch with some nice, uh, nice little contacts. Got to keep that. Ding, ding. All right, you keep her. Uh, still haven't figured out that ionizer. Uh, little diode capacitor, little sort of transistor. I'm gonna have to look that up on the internet. But that's a nice little pot. 2K. Okay, 2K. All right. Snippy, snippy. Keepy, keepy. Oh, what else we got here? Clickety click. All recyclable. Okay. Another good grade toggle switch. You know, you never know. You just never know. And another toggle switch. So these would be. Geez, they, they, yeah. That's uh, either on or off. And where did the other one go? That's got two contacts on it. Oh, there it is. There's the main. And that'll have. Oh, that's got the high low. All right. So two position switch, not bad. So what have we got on there? We've got, does it say common? Yeah, we'll figure it out. And uh, yet another cheater cord? Do I need another cheater cord? No. So off this, trying to salvage as much as we can. I think I'll just take this from here. These. Yeah, put together. I mean, it's not crap. It's just uh, maybe bad design. The components seem to be pretty robust. I want to save as much of that fuse as possible. It's like riveted on there, right? That's just a compression fitting. Okay. Ah, pretty short. Pretty short. 
wonder how bad these uh, fail. Like, I mean, if you got the expansion and contraction in there, too. Yeah, that's what I should have done with the other one. Oh, well. Maybe you'll be able to save it. But this is the gold here. This is the... That's the one I want to keep. The old bimetallic switch. Of course, you wouldn't want to use that in a sparky type of an environment because you will get arcing across there when it activates. Let's see how we can do this. My God, I hope this is not asbestos. Clickety click, you know what? Okay, I'll leave that mounted right on there like that. And uh, then I've got something to attach it to if I ever need to. All right, no point in ripping it down further than that. Click, click, click. All right, that's it. That's it for the DAS Lab. Today, thank you for joining us at the DAS Lab, where we always like to say WTF at least once. And uh, that can mean a variety of things. It's up to you to figure out what it is. And uh, don't get any on you. We'll see you next time.